Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is on type 2 hypersensitivity. In this lecture, we will first talk about some introductory points regarding type 2 hypersensitivity and then we will talk about the various mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity and after talking about each mechanism, we will also talk briefly about some clinical examples. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. So first, let's talk about some introductory points regarding type 2 hypersensitivity. It is also known as antibody-mediated or cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Now, why are we calling this antibody-mediated? Because here, antibodies are produced in response to antigens that are located on cell surface or in the extracellular matrix, and that causes hypersensitivity, as we will see. And the location of antigens are very important. We can see that in type 2 hypersensitivity, there is reaction of antibodies with antigens, but the antigens are located on cell surface or in the extracellular matrix. And this is different from what we will see in our next lecture on type 3 hypersensitivity. In that hypersensitivity or in type 3 hypersensitivity, we will see that antigens will combine with antibodies usually in the circulation and that will result in formation of some complexes that are referred as immune complexes and then those immune complexes will get deposited in the tissue. So that is the basic difference between type 2 and type 3 hypersensitivity. Both are in fact mediated by antibodies However, in case of type 2 hypersensitivity, we can see that antigens are located on cell surface or in extracellular matrix. And in case of type 3 hypersensitivity, we can see that antigens were initially located usually in the circulation. And then there was also formation of immune complex. And then that immune complex got deposited in the tissue. So that's why always remember that Type 2 hypersensitivity is known as antibody-mediated hypersensitivity and type 3 hypersensitivity is also known as immune complex-mediated hypersensitivity. So now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding type 2 hypersensitivity, now let's move on and talk about the various mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity. As we can see, there are several mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity. They are cell destruction by opsonization and phagocytosis, complement and FC receptor mediated inflammation, antibody mediated cellular dysfunction, etc. So let's talk about these various mechanisms one by one. First, let's talk about opsonization and phagocytosis. Now, what do we mean by opsonization? It is the process of coating a particle with proteins like immunoglobulin G antibodies or complement 3B that facilitate or help in phagocytosis of that particle. So that is opsonization. And as we can see, cells can be coated by immunoglobulin G antibodies and then those immunoglobulin G antibodies can be recognized by certain FC receptors of the phagocytes. Similarly, immunoglobulin M or immunoglobulin G antibodies can be deposited on cell surface and they can activate complement system by classical pathway and generate products like complement 3B and complement 4B. And complement 3B and 4B are then deposited on cell surface, they act as opsonin and they can also be recognized by phagocytes. So what happens next? After the cells are coated with opsonins like immunoglobulin G or complement 3B, the opsonized cells will get phagocytosed and destroyed by the phagocytes. Complement activation can also result in formation of membrane attack complex. And always remember that membrane attack complex can disrupt cell membrane integrity by drilling holes through the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane. And that's how it can also result in destruction of the cell. Now the last bullet point is also important. 
the role of ADCC or antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity to common hypersensitivity disease is uncertain. So we won't talk about that in this lecture, but we will talk about that in another lecture. So this slide is summarizing the process of opsonization and phagocytosis. Also remember that I have an entire video on phagocytosis, so you can also look into that video after finishing this to know more about phagocytosis. So in this image, on the right we can see a phagocyte and on the left we can see an opsonized cell. And we can see that this opsonized cell is coated with complement 3B that are drawn in pink color and we can also see that it is also coated with immunoglobulin G. Note that these immunoglobulin Gs were produced in response to antigen that is drawn in red color and we can also see that the antigens are located on the cell surface. And recall from the first slide we had seen that uh, in type 2 hypersensitivity antigens are located on the cell surface or in extracellular matrix. And if this was type 3 hypersensitivity then we would have seen those antigens not on the cell surface but usually in the circulation. And they would have formed immune complex with antibodies and then that immune complex would have deposited to the tissue. So I am telling you this important basic concept over and over again because this is very important and you will often be having caution regarding this both in your written and oral examination. Note that in the phagocyte we can see FC receptor and complement 3B receptor and FC receptors can recognize the FC portion of immunoglobulin G and complement 3B receptor as the name implies can recognize complement 3B. So, with the help of these receptors, the phagocyte can recognize those opsonins and that will help in phagocytosis of the opsonized cell. So, now let's talk about some clinical examples regarding this mechanism. Now, this slide is showing some clinical examples where type 2 hypersensitivity occurred by opsonization and phagocytosis. Examples will include autoimmune hemolytic anemia, autoimmune thrombocytopenic purpura, certain drug reactions, etc. In case of autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the target antigen is red cell membrane proteins like Rh blood group antigen, I antigen, etc. These antigens are located on the surface of red cell membrane. Antibodies will be produced in response to these antigens and those antibodies will coat the target cell and help in their phagocytosis by the mechanisms we just discussed. The clinical manifestations will be that of anemia and there will be features of hemolysis. In case of autoimmune thrombocytopenic purpura, the target antigen is platelet membrane proteins like GP2B3A integrin. Antibodies will be produced against these antigens and those antibodies will bind with the target antigens and that will help in phagocytosis of the target platelets. Clinical manifestations will be bleeding. The next mechanism is complement and FC receptor mediated inflammation. When antibodies are deposited in fixed tissues like basement membrane or extracellular matrix, injury may occur due to inflammation. Here, Antibodies are deposited on fixed tissues and they will activate complement system. Activated complement system will generate various byproducts. For example, it will generate chemotactic agents, predominantly complement 5A, and they have role in causing migration of neutrophil and monocytes. Similarly, Certain anaphylatoxins like complement 3A and complement 5A will be produced and they will increase vascular permeability. Now always remember leukocytes are activated by using their complement C3B and FC receptor. Activated leukocytes will produce lysosomal enzymes and reactive oxygen species that will also damage tissues. So now let's talk about some clinical examples regarding this mechanism. Now this slide is showing some clinical examples of type 2 hypersensitivity that occurred by the mechanism of inflammation. They will include vasculitis, 
that is caused by anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, good Pasteur syndrome, acute rheumatic fever, etc. So let's talk briefly about these diseases regarding vasculitis caused by anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. Always remember here the target antigen was neutrophil granule proteins and it is presumed that those proteins are released when neutrophils are activated. So what is happening here? Neutrophil degranulation and inflammation is the mechanism that is resulting in vasculitis. Regarding good Pasteur syndrome, always remember here the target antigen is non-collagenous protein in basement membrane of kidney glomeruli and lung alveoli. And the mechanism is inflammation that is mediated by complement and FC receptor. So, what is happening in good Pasteur syndrome? There is nephritis and there is lung hemorrhage. Regarding acute rheumatic fever, here the target antigen is streptococcal cell wall antigen and the mechanism is same, inflammation and the clinical features will include arthritis or inflammation of the joints and also myocarditis. The third mechanism of type 2 hypersensitivity is antibody-mediated cellular dysfunction. Here, antibodies formed against cell surface receptors will either impair or dysregulate cell function without injuring the cell or causing inflammation. So now let's talk about some clinical examples regarding this mechanism. So in this slide we can see some examples. One common example is that of myasthenia gravis. Here antibodies are formed against acetylcholine receptors in the motor end plates of skeletal muscles. These antibodies will block neuromuscular transmission and that will cause muscle weakness. Another example is in Graves disease. Here antibodies are formed against TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone receptor that are located on thyroid epithelial cells and these antibodies will stimulate the cells and that will cause hyperthyroidism. So we can see a contrast in case of myasthenia gravis the antibodies were blocking the neuromuscular transmission and that was hampering their function. In case of Graves disease the antibodies are stimulating the target cells and that is causing overproduction of thyroid hormones. So this concludes our lecture on type 2 hypersensitivity. I hope this lecture was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay safe.